You know, another another uh, thing that when we were putting the series together, Tyler and I thought was really important was to give um, you know voice and context to some of the work. And uh, the person we were really eager to reach out to is uh, Mitch Horowitz, who's here tonight to introduce the film. Um, I'll read a short bio. Um, um, Mitch is, as I'm sure some of you know, uh, one of the foremost um, writers and scholars on uh, topics of esoterica, mysticism, and the occult. Um, he illuminates outsider history, explains its relevance to contemporary life, uh, and reveals the long-standing quest to bring empowerment and agency to the human condition. And he's widely credited with returning the term new age to respectable use. Uh, and I think this next sentence is very true. Uh, he's one of the few occult writers whose work touches uh, the basis of academic scholarship, national journalism, and subculture cred. Um, we were really happy to have him here uh, last night to introduce Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and uh, tonight he's here to introduce Communion. So thanks so much for being here, Mitch, and uh, also I'll mention uh, his new book, Uncertain Places, uh, which is an essay collection, uh, is also here and he's uh, signing copies tonight, so be sure to find him after um, if you're interested. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thank you all for being here. Um, it's really a pleasure to introduce uh, the film adaptation of Communion. I've known and worked with Whitney Strieber for more than 12 years. Some of you may have seen the interview that we had together recently at ScreenSlate. I've known Whitley as his publisher. I no longer work in publishing. Um, an interlocutor, a friend, a fellow writer, a collaborator. I'm wondering how many of you were here uh, for the showing of the George Cushar movie, Secrets of the Shadow World? Okay, just a couple. Whitley was in that movie, and for those who saw it, I felt gratified that Cushar framed Whitley as a man who has a sense of humor about himself. The events that befell him and the portrayal that you'll see in tonight's film adaptation of Communion uh, do not leave on the surface a great deal of room for humor or levity. They were truly terrifying events. They were events that I think probably resulted in his suffering from PTSD. And yet, there is a lightness about the man personally. He is erudite, he's approachable, he's easy to talk to, his interests are very broad. And the thing that I love the most about Whitley, although he is absolutely dead serious and literal, literal as to what happened to him, as we all are, as to traumas that we've experienced in life and ought to be, there's also a presence of doubt in the man, and that's why I was always attracted to seek him out. We probably worked together on four books, come to think of it, and I've stayed in touch ever since. And it is that quality of doubt, of unknowingness, that I always look for in people who write about occult and paranormal topics, because as soon as any of us get into a position of certainty, of belief of feeling that we have to defend the perfect box into which we've placed phenomena, whether as deniers, as believers, or as something else altogether, a calcification sets in and we stop searching and we stop thinking. The other thing that I always look for among people who chronicle occult and paranormal topics is impeccability. And Whitley really has that. I was not a stranger. Uh, back in my publishing days and sometimes nowadays as a writer to encounter people who I would have to say had in certain cases falsified incidents. Um, there was one writer with whom I worked, now deceased, who falsified a Nostradamus quatrain. And you never falsify a Nostradamus quatrain on my watch. And I also, on a more kind of ordinary level, I would encounter people who were chronicling paranormal experiences, sometimes people of real distinguished backgrounds, who I later found were creating composite characters, which I don't think is something that's altogether off the table for a nonfiction writer, but he or she ought to let the audience know that that's a device that's being used. Um, 
I would encounter people who would mess around with timelines, rearrange events to heighten the dramatic tenor of the story so that they were aspiring to truthiness but not truthfulness. And Whitley always has aspired to truthfulness. And one thing that I very frequently tell people who want to write in the occult or esoteric or paranormal space or who are already doing so, if they haven't already read Communion, run out and do that. Do it immediately and use that book as a kind of North Star in your own work. Because the thing that is unique to my mind about that book is not so much the claimed phenomena, although I think they are, those events are described with a tremendous humanity and vividness and literary grace. But the thing that's really special, and I think you'll see some of this reflected in the film for which Whitley wrote the screenplay, is that he gives you names, he gives you dates, he gives you neighborhoods, he gives you locations, he gives you recorded reports that he was personally involved in. And it allows the individual, if he or she so wishes, to do the forensics, to look at sources, and you'll even see this in the interview that we did at ScreenSlate. He will cite the name of friends who were there, who witnessed certain things. And some of these people are individuals who you've read, like uh, the reporter and writer Margo Adler, who did so much to write about the modern revival of witchcraft. And there's that level of impeccability in his work that, to my mind, makes it a model, especially in the form of communion, for anybody who is seeking to write about topics that go outside of common observation. And the person who is writing about or making films about, if they're nonfiction, topics that go outside the common gaze, I do think shoulders and ought to feel him or herself shouldering an extra responsibility to overcome some of the natural resistance involved. So it seems to me that the people who achieve greatness in this area have this combination of doubt and impeccability. And that's exactly what Whitley brought to Communion, which is why I urge you to read the book. Um, the movie was its own Calico experience. There were financial difficulties on the film that made it difficult for the artists and the filmmakers to have a sufficient budget to achieve some of the special effects that they wanted. There were relationships on the film that were very difficult. There were games and power plays, some of which you can read about in our interview. And it was a difficult experience for Whitley personally to write a screenplay about his own life. It's extremely uncommon that a first person memoirist will also write a screenplay about the experiences that are being dramatized on film. But one thing that he always I think felt vindicated by, in terms of the movie, is that it does capture, especially in Christopher Walken's performance, the disorientation, the fear, the nervousness, the terror that Whitley experienced. And I'll close with this. I met Whitley for the first time in spring of 2009 at a retreat center on the Pacific Coast in Northern California. And he was standing out on a patio looking at the ocean. And I was eager to say hello to him because I had admired communion for a long time for the reasons that I've just referenced. And I stepped out onto the porch and I said, Whitley, and he almost jumped out of his skin. And I said to myself, this, this is a man suffering from PTSD. He has really suffered from these experiences and from the calumny that followed after he published his book. Yes, the book was a big bestseller, and that's gratifying artistically and financially, but he was also subject to tremendous, tremendous calumny. And his life has been marked by a lot of difficulty, but the man that I know is a person who has always maintained on a peer-to-peer -peer level a lightness, 
and approachability, an easy intimacy, and, and a humor about himself. And I think his ability to tell this story and retain those traits is not only remarkable in itself, but what's also remarkable is that in telling this story, it wasn't just a kind of creepy campfire tale or a yarn. It was a book and remains a book and remains a story that has helped many thousands of people feel less alone who have undergone similar experiences. And you know how painful it is not to feel seen. I don't know if there's anything more painful on an emotional scale than to feel unseen. And this is a work that helped people feel seen. So please enjoy communion. Thank you.